Global climate change and its extreme weather conditions have long since been felt. Climate change is now still at the beginning of its development, but its consequences will steadily become more severe in the coming decades. Never before have temperatures been as high as in the past 50 years. Global temperatures have risen on the average by 0.74 degrees Celsius annually since the start of the 20th century. A further increase of 0.6 degrees is expected for the next three decades. The Alps are directly affected by rapid climate change and this is quite perceptible to everyone. Extreme meteorological events such as heavy rains, heat waves and storms are becoming more frequent and hitting new records. In the past 50 years, temperatures in the Alpine region have risen much faster than on the global average. Since 1950, the snowfall limit has shifted upwards by more than 100 meters to higher altitudes. The glaciers in the Alps have lost around 50% of their ice mass in the past 100 years. Alone in the Swiss Alps, some 100 glaciers have disappeared since 1850. The transnational project CLISP, funded by the European Union, addresses this issue. CLISP stands for Climate Change Adaptation by Spatial Planning in the Alpine Space and is the first and above all the first transnational project in the entire Alpine region that deals with the adjustment to climate change and spatial planning. And it is also a matter of the effects on the various sectors. Of immediate relevance for spatial planning are natural hazards such as landslides, mudslides, falling boulders and flooding. But also the effect on other sectors such as, for example, tourism. How certain will snowfall be in the year 2030, 2050? What will it mean for agriculture, forestry? A relatively extensive study is being conducted on what the effects of potential climate change imply for the region. We believe CLIST to be a highly attractive project because it deals with a new topic, climate change, which up to now had not been an established part of spatial planning. A young theme that still needs a lot of research. We often receive questions about climate change and spatial planning. What can spatial planning do in this context? Spatial planning is frequently mentioned as an actor. We hope, with respect to the principal areas, to receive feedback about which sectors will be affected in Upper Austria, simply to be able to conduct a screening of Upper Austria, and then use the findings, for example, in the preparation of a spatial planning scheme for Upper Austria, and to involve the corresponding sectors. What are the concrete issues of relevance for the climate and spatial planning in the Alpine region? How are the regions affected by climate change and how susceptible are they? Fourteen partners from Slovenia, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, Liechtenstein and Italy have come together to find the answers to these questions and to develop joint solutions with the model regions. The selected model regions are examples of the diversity, but also for the similarities in the Alpine region. What are the common challenges and what actions are needed? The region of Upper Austria is the largest model region as regards both size and population, and the landscapes and economic conditions are accordingly diverse. A broadly diversified traditional industrial sector, tourism, agriculture and forestry are the economic basis. Only 10% of the territory of Liechtenstein is settled space, with settlements and business concentrated in the Rhine Valley. Industry and the financial sector predominate in the economy. In the small mountainous regions of Piemonte, the economy is based on agriculture and forestry, as well as tourism. The two German model regions, Berchtesgadener Land and Miesbach, are dominated by tourism. Compared to Bavaria, agriculture and forestry still play a major role here. Characteristic for the region Gorinska in the northwest of Slovenia is the contrast between the heavy industrialized areas in the valleys and the alpine agriculture and tourism in the mountains.
40% of the region Gorenska is located at an altitude of over 1,000 meters. Graubünden is the largest canton in Switzerland and at the same time the most sparsely populated. 2.5% of the area is covered by glaciers. 44% of the population lives at an altitude of over 1,000 meters. The most important branches of the economy include tourism and the power industry. The two Austrian model regions, Lietzen and pinsgau pongau are also significant tourism regions. In some municipalities of these regions, there are up to 1,000 overnight stays per inhabitant. Winter tourism predominates. Industry, agriculture and forestry, as well as the construction and power, define the region's economic structure. Southern Tyrol is the second largest model region with respect to population and territory. In comparison to the other areas, tourism is much more predominant throughout the year here. And farming, especially fruit farming, plays a significant role for Europe, considering that South Tyrol is Europe's largest apple producer. The Alpine region is a place where 13 million people live and work. The Alps have many mountain passes and paths which have been used across the mountains for thousands of years. The Alpine region is an important European transport and transit region. Are the Alps at risk as a living space and economic area? If temperatures continue to rise in the coming 50 years, this will entail dramatic changes for the Alps. And not only for the environment and with respect to natural hazards, but also for the economy and society in general. Winters will become warmer and bring more rain. The risk of flooding and mudslides will rise. Periods of intense rain will become more frequent. The flood risk in valleys will increase steeply. The summer and autumn months will become warmer and drier. What are the consequences for the Alpine region? From 1980 to 2000, the population in the Alpine region rose by more than 1.1 million. During the same period, the number of newly erected buildings grew by 1.3 million. Only around 10 to 20% of the total surface area of the Alpine region is suitable for intensive use. The population is concentrated in the valleys and in places that can be easily reached. In a region in which space is so scarce, not only does usage pressure rise, but also the competition for available space for housing, industry, commerce and tourism infrastructure. Built-up areas are spreading into up to now open spaces. Urban sprawl is on the rise. Spatial planning instruments can influence climate change. In my opinion, they are important instruments, especially with regard to the development of transportation. The instruments of spatial planning can contribute to preserving a settlement structure or to its creation, but with short travel distances and good transport accessibility. Today, some 120 million holiday guests visit the Alpine region and 500 million overnight stays are registered every year. Tourism has developed into the most important segment of the economy in the formerly rural cultural landscape. According to forecasts, in around 20 years, winter tourism will hardly be feasible at medium altitudes in the Alpine countries. And in 30 years, winter tourism will no longer have a basis at altitudes of over 1,500 meters and in the glacier regions. On the other hand, the climate change expected will make it possible to extend the spring, summer and autumn seasons. Overall rising temperatures could also mean a competitive edge for the Alpine region over holiday destinations in southern Europe. Today one is hearing more and more about a renaissance of Sommerfrische, the custom of city dwellers going to the mountains during the hot, dry summer season. In many regions of the Alps, agriculture and forestry play an important role. These sectors of the economy do not only secure income, but also contribute to landscape conservation. Both agriculture and forestry are especially strongly affected by climate change. Heat, water scarcity and natural hazards cause income losses, affliction by pests and the destruction of production areas. Due to high temperatures, forest limits will also rise to higher elevations. 
the permanent green areas crucial for animal pastures will be lost. These potential developments are confronting farmers in the Alps, above all mountain farmers with new challenges. In the Alpine regions, pastures and grazing grasslands, animal husbandry and forestry predominate. The soil, the climate and the topography make it hard to switch from grasslands to agriculture. In addition, forests also have an important protective function, apart from their role in the economy, as forests protect the alpine infrastructure from avalanches and landslides. The maintenance and upkeep of these forests is becoming an increasingly important task in the light of the changing climate. The Alps are the largest water reservoir in Europe. The Alps are home to the sources of major rivers such as the Rhine, the Rhone and the Po. It supplies large areas of Europe with clean water. Melting glaciers, earlier snow melting, drops of 10 to 20 percent in precipitation, decreasing groundwater levels. These are the consequences expected of climate change in the Southern Alps. The Alps as a water reservoir are at risk. We've already seen evidence of some first regional and seasonal bottlenecks during the summer heat waves of 2003 and 2006. Dry rivers and depleting water springs, suddenly water became scarce for households, farming, the power industry and tourism, and leisure time businesses as well as the industrial sector. We have stated that our special interest is in the issue of water, specifically water scarcity. What we want to investigate is if this will lead to certain conflicts, at least in some regions, over the medium term. What would be an appropriate strategy to deal with such conflicts? As a model region, the province selected an area that is made up of an association of mountain communities. Valle d'Orba, Valle Lema, Orba, Bomida. It is a region that does not have any typical alpine features, but rather Apennine characteristics, because they are in fact located at relatively low altitudes. However, this area exhibits all features that are typical for a region in which water resources are a development factor, but which also implies problems and potential for conflict. For this reason, it is our intention to investigate the problems based on the model region related to water management. Natural hazards such as mudslides, landslides, falling boulders and avalanches are events that are part of the alpine habitat. They only become a risk when human beings are threatened in their usage of space. Human beings are moving with their buildings and roads further into areas that carry potential hazards. Climate change is a reason to worry. It is precisely in sensitive ecosystems such as the Alps that even small changes can have lasting impacts. But there are also risks from thawing permafrost and the shrinking of permanently frozen ground. The destabilization of the subsoil will put roads, hiking paths, climbing routes, skiing slopes and above all, ski lifts and cable cars at risk. What can spatial planning do to counter the effects of climate change? What are the options created by spatial planning instruments for preparing for the consequences of climate change. As lead partner, we expect the project to deliver significant impulses for spatial planning in the Alpine region. Also, a strategic strengthening of spatial planning before the backdrop of climate change. And ultimately, the project aims to develop concrete and strategic recommendations for action, as well as to reveal the possibilities for taking action in spatial planning to effectively contribute to the adjustment to climate change. And this should happen across all levels, including transnational and national, as well as regional and even municipal levels.